<laughs> Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that midweek break, and just kind of have a chat about some of the things we found interesting <laughs> Yay! going on in the world of Linux. <laughs> Open source. Uh, Pedro's like, we're going to talk about AMD processors. And I'm like, Pedro, but but we're going to talk. Okay, fine. We're going to be doing that well, later. Well, I snuck that one story in there. <laughs> yes. there, There's no stopping the Pedro signal. Um, <laughs> Yay! And then Stone, that is one Jill Bryant, and that <laughs> AMD-loving <laughs> fanboy over there is one Pedro Mateus. With an NVIDIA GPU. Yes, With an NVIDIA. Oh, you're going to you're gonna short circuit the haters, man. Not... <laughs> hey, everyone, joining us live. Uh, we're going to do a thing. What's going on, beautiful people? Jill. Uh, oh yes! Did you? Uh, it, it, it takes Jill roughly two and a half to three months to finish a computer. No, it was just, I just took my time with this one. You got it. I honestly think I have, you forgot about it. You're like, oh, what was that? <laughs> when we go to the big shot, you'll see it. I have a, a big, beautiful pink computer um, for my new LGC broadcasting rig, and I'm rocking Pop OS on it, yay, and an AMD RX 560, and it has been running smoothly with gaming at Ultra HD, playing Distance, the Talos Principle Valley, and in the Friday FUBAR, we played uh, Dota Lord, Underlords, and I played it in uh, 3300 by 1800. That was pretty cool. Quit lying to the people. <laughs> Neither one of us played Dota Underlords. <laughs> yes, you yes. watched as the characters did Auto things. chess. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, we clicked on things. Things happened. We're like, I don't, all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the main reason I did it because I, I was just hoping somebody w had been playing it for the, the past two days and were screaming like you need to get good scrub and like go away yeah <laughs> Pedro what's up man how you doing uh you doing good well that's great. over here yeah uh, I I'm slowly melting a little bit because it's uh it's like 22 whole celsius outside but it's 90 percent humidity so it's terrible did you ever call your parents up <laughs> and like complain and they're in portugal yeah like, and then my changed. mom goes it's like yeah it's 45 celsius outside it's like all right never mind <laughs> oh my goodness wow <laughs> we do have weather conversations constantly and because especially yeah. with our team canadian podcaster on saturdays you know he's short in a t-shirt and he's like yeah it's 10 <laughs> yeah. yeah canada <laughs> <Stop>. weather <laughs> yes. oh man I had a fun experience. I, I, I like almost mm. chemically destroyed my face. That's not, that's what it felt like. Oh, it genuinely did. Don't don't get curious, kids. Cur well, okay, get curious. Just don't complain. I'm not complaining. I just want to show science. You. Yeah, right. <laughs> no, this is just good old fashioned old men and stupidity. I straight up was um, like buying some rubbing alcohol. It's, you know, just regular stuff for like random in injuries that you get. And they had. Uh, what are they called? They go over your nose. They're like nose peely strip things. Yeah, nose strips. Nose strips. I'd seen mm -hmm. they've been out forever. And it's like, I've never tried those. I went this this is the, this is how mm -hmm. it always ends or starts. It's like <laughs> just leave well enough alone. You don't need and I was like, yeah, I'm gonna try those. I'm gonna buy that. Whatever. I haven't even tried them. I was like, what's what's in the package? And it had like a facial cleanse mask. <laughs> Yeah, and I was like, "What's going on with this?" And I'll throw it away. It's like, no, self-heating. It's like, I gotta try oh, this. Oh, <laughs> oh self-endangerment, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> it's self-heated, man. That thing hurt. Oh, poor man. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a fun experience. Uh, outside of that, I've been bouncing around for the past uh, yesterday after Steam got itself. Oh, there's a Steam summer sale on Linux and gaming. Yay. It's a beautiful thing. We even do a show about it. Go check it out. Couldn't find anything I wanted to buy. Uh, and I looked. Did, did... Yeah, it's slim pickings yeah. right about now. Proton did open a couple of doors, but... Eh. <laughs> even with Proton, it was like, I, I'll burn a heretic purchase. And I uh, didn't couldn't and the, yeah. I, I feel kind of but hey there are some deals they're not deals like is it just me didn't they used to mm. be like really great insta buy deals yeah yeah, yeah they, like, they used to be it's like that game yeah <laughs> that game you yeah. <laughs> you've heard about uh on all of the gaming sites 90 percent off so oh, give me yeah <laughs> yeah 
And now it's like 50% off. Eh, that's still 12 yeah. pounds. I was going to buy a copy of um, My Friend Pedro and send it to you, but I was like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't discounted enough. I was like, I don't I like am nothing if not a narcissist. Right. I thought it'd be cute. Um, it might still happen. All right, beautiful people. We're not going to skip around. We got to get right into it. We got to talk about this yes. thing. Uh-huh. Yeah, I think the internet's <laughs> finally calmed down. Last week, we gave a mention that Canonical was like, peace out, 32-bit, that's old hat. We don't do it anymore. Um, tidy Rick, and they run off. <laughs> and talking about the upcoming 1910 and 2004 LT uh, release, they're going to just, they've already dropped 32-bit ISOs. Everybody was cool with that, but then they're going to get rid of uh, Multi-Arch, which for i386 uh, is going to be a problem for things like Wine, Steam, Ubuntu Studio, a lot of audio production stuff, and the internet uh, collectively went, you, you you did what, mate? Mm. You what, mate? <laughs> yes. So they've kind of rolled back. This was a mo- We're just going to get to the end thing. We're not, we're not going to dance around because I was like, oh, drama and all that. I'm not concerned about <laughs> the drama. Plan two from Canonical is they will build selected 32-bit i386 packages for 1910 and 2004 LTS. So the immediate panic, you can kind of tamp down a little bit. And they will also be working with Wine, Ubuntu Studio, and Gaming Steam to use the <laughs> upcoming container technology to address the ultimate end of life 32 bit libraries. They did mm. say it's like the, uh, when they say that's like, yeah, they specifically don't mention Valve on that bit. Okay, yes. that <laughs> little bit of drama was almost too funny to. <laughs> not funny in a good way, especially if you're like tied into canonical and that's like your thing, which I know some people get really huggy, clingy with the distributions because it's like, hey, we're talking to Valve and I'm like, okay, because that's what I was saying last week was, all right, so th- they, they have a plan coming forward. Then um, Perrier, Perrier. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yes, every yeah. time I think about it, my mental image is a bottle of Perrier, green and fizzy French water. Um, Plagman. Plagman. There we go. Yes. That my brain can work with. He's like, uh, yeah, peace out. We're done <laughs> with a uh, canonical. Yeah. And it's like, I didn't expect that. I was like, whoa, okay. Yeah. Uh, negotiations didn't go so well. Um, <laughs> but. Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to look at it like this. This is a good, uh, no matter, because I know everyone was like, ah, oh, we've defeated. It's okay. It's especially good when a company can change its mind. They're like, oh, we heard this is a bad idea. Yes. So we're going to correct course or, you know, maybe we wanted to do this, but this would affect the community course correction. That should get a little bit of applause, you know, like, hey, yes. that's good. You didn't double down, you know, having a contingency plan. Seems like it's a logical choice. <laughs> Maybe should have been done in the first place. That's arguable. Um, I do want to say, you know, m- maybe we don't get to have the collective, you know, we did it party, as the internet loves to do, because I think this basically boiled down to the responses from like one Steam Ubuntu Studio, basically and collectively going, have fun with that. We're we're not playing ball on that, and so you. Kind of got to come up with something, which they did. Yeah, Jill? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, you know, as uh, SteamOS is Debian-based after all, so for for Valve, they're just like, oh, you know, they could just say, no, I'm not going to use Ubuntu anymore. We'll we'll stick with with, uh, Debian. Um, But anyways, uh, Canonical states in the article that it has always been our intention to maintain users' ability to run 32-bit applications on 64-bit Ubuntu. Our kernels specifically support that. Yes, yeah, and uh, you, <laughs> staying true to that, they 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 have uh, gone back on their initial uh, <laughs> sad, sad uh, state of things and reenacted uh, 32-bit. And, you know, the beauty of Linux is that of supporting legacy hardware and software and Ubuntu getting rid of 32-bit support completely would cripple apps that need it, including Lutris. And we've talked about Steam. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Canonical, yeah, you do realize that Ubuntu is the main gaming Linux distro these days. Question mark. Yes. It's the main distro for everything. It is. (laughs) Definitely. (laughs) And, and, you know, what's interesting about this is, as I was reading uh, through all this news, um, 
you know, we talked recently about the controversial Linux Mint article and, and the use of having Linux Mint around um, instead of just uh, supporting Cinnamon instead of a whole distro with Cinnamon. And I was just getting ready to tell everyone that the Linux Mint Debian edition LMDE would be a great alternative to Ubuntu because Debian will continue to support 32-bit lives. So yeah. maybe now I don't have to. <laughs> so. Yeah, and as we mentioned last week, Debian isn't going anywhere. So that yes. that will always be an alternative. But yes. yeah, this whole um, statement was less of a screeching U-turn. It's like, oh, no, <laughs> no uh, it was more of an exasperated fine. Yes. Uh, and they turned around. It's like, okay, we'll support these libraries that will make sure that uh, Steam and Wine and whatever Ubuntu Studio needs these days, that those will keep running. And um, they did say that uh, not extensive discussions. They said they had uh, extensive threads on the Ubuntu develop list and also consulted with Valve. Um, but something about Plagman's tweet, uh, Pierre Le Prefet, when he posted that tweet saying, yeah, we're not going to be supporting, uh, Ubuntu 1910, uh, so we're just going to use another distro. Something about that particular tweet made me read a little bit of, um, oh. if you make our life any harder, we're going to drop you harder than the pound after Brexit. Uh. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. uh. When, uh, when, like, <laughs> I posted this on Discord, and I think it was Jordan and MT and Fo uh, Foxy, and they were all talking about it, it's like, uh, one of the points that they bring up in the article is that you've heard about Spectre and Meltdown. Many of the mitigations for those attacks are unavailable to 32-bit systems. Uh, yeah, that is BS. Uh, and that mm -hmm. is BS because most 32-bit systems don't have any speculative execution, so you don't get to use that one. Uh, yeah. this was, I said last <laughs> week that, uh, this would be a poop storm, uh, depending on how Canonical would handle it, and the poop storm hit even before they did anything. <laughs> Welcome to the internet, though, Pedro. It's already been a few days, and everyone's oh, forgotten. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is a thing. So apparently, Ubuntu is going to keep uh, uh, 32 bit or some select 32 bit libraries. No yes. one canonical, no one is asking you to keep 32 bit ISOs. Last year, we. Pedro, on this very nobody show, is, period. <laughs> They've already dropped yeah. it. This is old history. Yeah, on this show, mm -hmm. we specifically said, it's like, that's okay. Yeah. That was inevitable. And you brought that up again. That's why uh, this led us to stop creating Ubuntu install media for i386 last year. It's like, no one cares about that. <laughs> Let it go. You got it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> again, ultimately, it boils down to it, this is more sane than option <laughs> A. Oh. Yeah, uh, much definite, most definitely. However, <laughs> me being me, I, I got to look at it going, oh, because <laughs> in, I'm, not, I'm not saying this to like spool up an argument or anything like that. As I said last week, I somebody's got to do this at some point. And yeah. I, yeah. I was kind of curious of like, now granted, I'm going to be over here in my Fedora Hill with my popcorn watching how it goes. <laughs> but I wanted, I was like, okay, let, let's see how this works out. Let's come up. Because, say what you want, I mean, now, <laughs> the wine team following through their mailing list, there was movement. They were like, okay, we actually need to work on something now. To where now it's like, yeah, we'll get it back around to it maybe later. You know, mm -hmm. as, opp <laughs> as opposed to Valve's like, yeah. have fun with that, we're not doing anything. Uh, yeah, no, Valve went straight up, like, oh, you're making our life a little bit harder, are you? Goodbye. Other Bye. stuff to do. <laughs> Okay, yes. we're done with that. That's the thing that happened. <laughs> if the world's a better yes. place, we'll never have to do internet drama again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. <laughs> On the road Hopefully. to Fedora Workstation 31, wanted to bring this up, give it a mention, because I've been playing around with Pipewire recently, because that is the new future, the new hotness. Uh, in 10 years, when Wayland becomes a thing, I want to be ready. And that's kind of what they talk about in the blog. Uh, this is blog.gnome.org. All this is going to be in our show notes. Just the work that's been going into getting everything up and running, including pipe wire, just some graphical changes and all that fun stuff. Uh, 
I'm interested because there, you know there's finally uh, work being done with the NVIDIA binary driver with support for that with the Wayland. So that's going to be interesting to see how that rolls out. And some of the back end work, they are looking for people to help test out with some of the back end on Pipewire. That's going to, that is going to be the one tool for your audio and for screen sharing WebRTC and all that, which is available right now in Chrome. You have to enable it with the Chrome flags, but they want people to play around with that, which I really want to do because after digging around, I'm like, yo, there's now jack support in Pipewire. You have to enable that option. So I'm looking for a way to get rid of Pulse Audio completely. And I think Pipewire with Chrome plus jack might be a way to do that. Uh, there's also some mentions of, you know, updates with Flatpak, stuff they're doing, and the Fedora toolbox. So a bunch of cool stuff. Nice. Uh, Gnome Classic for the hipsters. Mm -hmm. And uh, what else do we have going on in your Pedro? Well, we mm -hmm. have uh, actually one of the bits that they mentioned in the Wayland section that the stupid fly is annoying me. Um, they say that finally there is the NVIDIA binary, graphic, uh, binary graphics driver support question. So you can run a native uh, Wayland session on top of the binary driver, no issues, and you had that ability for a very long time. Unfortunately, there has been no support for the binary driver in X Wayland and thus X applications running in Wayland. <laughs> And they've actually sent some code to NVIDIA for them to review and hopefully get NVIDIA to implement something that will support that code and get it working so we can have x Wayland support in um, the NVIDIA binary drivers. Because we all remember that NVIDIA wants to do EGL streams and uh, GNOME and everyone else why, wants why, to do... Why do you hate proprietary EGL and... <laughs> I don't know, but uh, yeah, so there's there's been that bit of a kerfuffle going on, and Gnome and Red Hat, I'm guessing, probably went to NVIDIA just like, okay, here's some code, how about you support this instead? So we'll have to wait and see how NVIDIA reacts to that, but if NVIDIA does uh, agree to that and they tailor their drivers to support it, x Willen not only becomes a possibility, it all of a sudden becomes something that I can see myself using uh, on this very box on the very yeah. near future. So, yeah. Mm. Go. You go. <laughs> oh, uh, you know, Pipewire is a couple of reasons, but was definitely helped in my decision to move our um, main render box and over to Fedora. I want to be able to play with that because that is going to be the future. I see Alan say, yeah, Pulse Audio works with Jack. It is like, do you, do you want X runs? Now let me show you how you get X runs. Um, oh, yeah. And that is using the Jack Pulse Audio bridge. It's just the reality of life. Both of these boxes are tied into uh, using that because Chrome's like, man, we're never going to enable Jack. And Firefox is like, it's there, but you got to compile it from source. And I'm like, I, I don't know because WebRTC with Firefox is dodgy in the first place. Um, looking mm -hmm. forward to the, and I want NVIDIA and the Wayland and all that. I want that to collaborate because I think I was just for myself. I've, Never played with Wayland because I don't have anything to put these boxes, maybe with the Intel yeah, integrated the, graphics. It'll work on the optiplexes. Yeah. Yeah. I've tried it on the on the laptops, and yeah, if you have Intel uh, graphics with Mesa, it'll work just fine. Hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, in this this release, one of their main uh, focuses was finishing the Wayland transition and removing their X windowing. System dependency without the need of using X Wayland in the GNOME shell is actually their biggest goal. And I was really impressed actually with how they will implement this and still support older software. An X server, X Wayland, would only be started if you actually run an X application. And when you shut that application down, the X server will be shut down too. I thought that was a you know ingenious way to work around, uh, solve that problem. And what's really cool also is game mode, which optimizes gameplay on Linux, is being updated to work well with games packaged with flat packs. Feral? So that's, yeah. <laughs> and feral interactive games, yes. <laughs> and uh, they are finishing work on integrating the Dell Canvas Totem, which is the device we talked about last year that is a large format graphics tablet with a stylus and also a turn turnable knob that can be placed onto the graphics tablet. And it's a digital Dell nipple. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, well, it's, it's very an important. oversized nipple. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's very important. Um, it, in uh, the totem is very actually important and used extensively in the art, design, animation, video editing, and game houses. And uh, Red Hat RB, RPM distros are at the forefront, of course, of this technology. So it's it's really really wonderful. <laughs> Lots of huge. I want, I want one of those Dell Kansas monitors, but they're so yes. stupidly expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's a thing. That's neat. Always, I, I got to keep track of it now because uh, Fedora Thirty One. It's right around the corner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Neo dodge a bullet on that. I mean, I love Fedora. <laughs> Yes. It, it's a bit more, I, I really wish I, I, we were talking in the um, pre-show, I was like, man, I'd really like to run CentOS. But then again, that's a whole <laughs> other can of chainsaws I don't want to have to deal with. Negativos, yeah. uh, negativos repos. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I will end up with a free, again, Hannah Montana Linux left in a room with me for a day. It's going to be back <laughs> to wherever it's at right now. All right. Uh, Zorn OS. Uh, Yay. People have been talking about that. That's the thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So two weeks ago, we talked about the Zorn OS new version 15 release and how much we liked this Ubuntu 18.04.2 LTS derivative aimed at new users to Linux. Now Zorn is collaborating with Star Labs, a UK-based manufacturer specializing UK in UK-based? That's, that's not what the CW show <laughs> Flash has told me, Star Labs. <laughs> this is in Capital City, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> not that Star so, Labs. Oh. Not that Star Labs, no. <laughs> Shut up, Barry. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. <laughs> yeah, so Star Labs um, is a UK-based manufacturer specializing in computers designed for Linux. And uh, they have two laptops that are now available with Zorin OS 15 core pre-installed, which is really awesome. Actually, these laptops have gotten really, really good reviews. So I was really yeah. happy to see this. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, they come in both Ultrabook and uh, Netbook form factors. So that's 13.3 inches and 11.6. Uh, I guess that's the smallest they're willing to go because... That books aren't really a thing, but uh, stick around for the next story. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> this one, the uh, Star Laptop that they say is like the flagship of the Star Labs uh, laptops. Uh, it actually comes with a quad-core um, Intel i7, which basically after you apply all of the Spectre mitigations and you disable hyperthreading, that's all you're getting. It's a quad-core. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and <laughs> yeah. it is 800 pounds. That's not yeah. too bad, considering the form factor, and it only comes with 8 gigs of RAM, granted, but it does come with a 480 gigabyte SSD, and with that resolution uh, screen on a 13.3 inch display, that's not a bad price, actually. <laughs> Pe not bad at all. Uh, I think it's no. a neat piece of kit, but I'm going to ask you a question, Pedro. Hmm? You ever look at a 10 inch laptop and be like, man, that's just too big. <laughs> uh, admittedly, I used one of those for like the last three years of university. That was my netbook that right. I carried did, around. Did, did you ever look at a, I don't know, nine inch laptop? <laughs> like, man, if it was just not that big. <laughs> <laughs> I did get that uh with the with a Chromebook. It is an eleven point six inch uh laptop and it's like yeah, it could deal with being a bit smaller because those bezels around the screen, they don't need to be that so, big. So if a company yeah. made a laptop and they called it technically not ten inches or nine inches. That, yeah. Or yeah, like have a nine inch screen and basically ten inch wide. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah. That'd like be that very system. nice. Yeah. Tell me about it. <laughs> uh -huh. And speaking of uh, uh, nine-inch screens, uh, crowdfunding for the GPD P2 Max 8.9-inch laptop begins June 26. <laughs> Yay! On Indiegogo, where they are taking pre-orders. And uh, this is GPD uh, of the GPD Pocket fame, the, the ultra-mini pocketable uh uh, gaming computers I that you can buy. I know, me too. <laughs> so what's really awesome is the GPD P2 is a nice modern netbook, ultrabook that weighs 1.5 pounds. That thing's lots the size of, of my power. thumb. 
Yes, it, it would be too small for, mm. for Vin. <laughs> Have you seen me try to type on a 10-inch tablet? It's adorable. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is basically nine inches across, so yeah, this is proper netbooksville. That's not hey, a netbook. Well, That's a netbook for ants. <laughs> <laughs> it's still bigger than my original EPC. <laughs> so. Yeah, those were um, seven inch. Seven inch, yeah. Yeah, but here's so, the thing about and... the netbook. Triple E, I have one of the, you, you didn't expect it to laptop. It was a novelty item. You're like, ah, oh, that's cool. Look at this. All right. Yeah. And this this has this so one, much the, more power. These have Celerons. Uh, admittedly, they're the yeah. Celerons that come with the. Uh, well, they're basically the new atoms. Uh, they're the Y three uh, processors. Yeah. And oh, they're running Unity. I was about to say now they're just being yes. mean to it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to burn whatever surface you are uh, laying that teeny tiny little netbook on? That's how you do it. Yeah. <laughs> and your second thought was, all right, yeah. does it support Vulcan? <laughs> it's intel it it's most intel. likely will yeah yes yes well i think it's awesome it has a 2560 by 1600 screen which is really high resolution for something of the size for less and, than nine inches uh, that's pretty good yeah it's really good you know and what it i'm, I'm really gonna buy with, one of these i'm gonna disable you know. dpi scaling and give it to strider <laughs> <laughs> yeah, make the boy yes. suffer. And after I put a little yes. hot glue on the HDMI out on it. <laughs> yeah, and, it, and it's great. It, it comes with up to 16 gigs of RAM and up to 512 gigs of storage and uh, a nice uh, Celeron processor, two different versions. So, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to sit back and the first time on the internet, someone used the word nice and Celeron in the same sentence. Yeah. Well, They're not as bad as they used to be. There's to be not that, it's, they are not celery chips. <laughs> they used to be called celery trips, and that was a good name for them. Now I've always been able to pronounce it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, celeron chips have come a long way. <laughs> and, but yeah, uh, no celerons yeah. nowadays. They even make quad core celerons. No hyperthreading. Yeah. But then again, you really don't want to enable that at this point. <laughs> That'd be yeah. like if Lamborghini made a skateboard, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes so and you know i i'm guessing that wimpy will probably put a bunch of mm-hmm. mate on on this as well as he did for the gpd pocket too mm. yep and yeah it he looks, really enhanced enhanced that for like a, a genuinely cool device mm-hmm. i mean if you're just like out mm-hmm. and about and somebody like zaps you with a shrink ray and you're like man i still need a laptop because <laughs> that yeah, no, that is hand size. <laughs> it's like either that dude uh, that was recording the video is huge, or that is very much my palm. <laughs> I was about to say that yeah. would fit yeah. in here, handily. Yeah, no pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Aww. Pedro, tell me about this new AMD hotness because you put it in the show. Well, mm-hmm. it's not Yay. directly uh, Linux related, but I know for a fact that I'm buying one of the 3000 uh, Ryzen's when they come out or probably at the end of July. But uh, yeah, one certain Spanish website. Uh, let me see if Spanish. I Spanish. It was f- Portuguese, son. Quit trying through Spain under the bus. They were the ones that no, leaked No, it. no, no, no. The no, first no. leak uh, was from mm-hmm. a Portuguese site because I checked. <laughs> El Chupazas Informatico is very much a Spanish website, and um, yeah. they uh, decided to break embargo on uh, the Ryzen 5 3600 review. And I'm guessing they're never going to get any more early samples uh, because AMD doesn't play ball like that. But uh, yeah, they decided to put out the results uh, that they got on an X470 motherboard because they didn't have an X570 to test on. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... At worst, like, long, long story short, at worst, it's giving Jordan 7600K a run for the money, as in it's actually beating it in just about every single test. And the, um, at best, like the best case scenario in multi-threaded workloads, it's coming neck to neck with the uh, 9900K. Now, you need to keep in mind that the uh, 9900K is one of Intel's stupidly overpriced uh, processors, and the 3600 uh, has been announced with an MSRP of $199. $199 going neck-to-neck in multi-threaded performance with the 9900K. Mm -hmm. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, So the 5300 is basically a 1700X Ryzen 7. 
with two less cores. Mm-hmm. I didn't stutter. Yeah. Yeah. It, mm-hmm. It's a six core, 12 thread that's performing on par with an eight core from the previous generation. Actually, it's actually doing a heck of a lot better uh, in single threaded performance than the 2700X. Mm-hmm. So it's, yeah, it, it's uh, for a supposedly $200 MSRP processor. That's very good. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> and and I've been really impressed with how far AMD has come with their 7 nan nanometer zen 2 core architecture it's really really been amazing as opposed to the uh, 14 nanometer that intel has been using so that's it's really been uh been really good for them and you know if these reviews hold steady and they look like they will i will be also buying a 3600 this year (laughs) i'm I'm gonna do it yay (laughs) what are the prices going to be for these uh, I'm sure they will be 200 mm. bucks on release, mm-hmm. and uh, before the first week is out, they will be 250. <laughs> so, I, I guess the question you really get out is like, what's the 2700X going to be? Uh, the 2700X has already dropped significantly yeah. because, like, three weeks ago it was 330 pounds, and now it's 270. Uh, mm-hmm. So that's really yeah. the game, like. This is this is Vin thing. This is what I'm looking at when a new processor comes out. And I was like, I, I don't care what it costs. I'm like, what is it going to drive it mm-hmm. previous? Because I'm a, usually a generation behind, just reasons. But mm-hmm. yeah, and the twenty uh, the twenty seven hundred X right now before you know July seventh is still the reigning champion in price performance as far as consumer grade processors go. Mm-hmm. It's a very good processor for 270 pounds. Uh, but yeah, if this, like Jill said, if this holds up when uh, July 7th rolls around, I think I might be happy with my 3700X purchase. Yay. <laughs> good times. Uh, it's good to have been around long enough to see AMD. We don't yes. know yet, but this looks like the second coming of baby Jesus AMD. You know, like, yeah. yeah. When they first like the rolled out with the Thunderbird, yeah. and they're like, "Bam!" Mm-hmm. Competition. They back. had, yeah, yeah, they had the first uh, series Ryzen, and they had the Zen Plus series with the 2000 series Ryzen. Mm-hmm. It's like okay, n- competitive, and then they improved on that competitiveness and basically put out the 2600 and the 2700X, which are the best processors in their particular I'm sorry, price Pager, categories. Nothing you said rhymed with thread rippers, <laughs> so it's just static noise to me right now. <laughs> yeah, the thread oh. rippers, AMD decided to delay the relay of the they uh, didn't the delay release of those until the end of the year. So <laughs> like, yo, yeah, we're still working on that. Why did the internet <laughs> oh internet was doing the internet thing, right? We're, yeah, we're gonna... they didn't announce it. Right. They, they they delayed the announcement. <laughs> Which I'm, I'm genuinely curious. I, I want to see how it shakes out because if you're going to have like a uh, eight core, which is fine, but if you're going to have a sixteen core part, yeah, the, wow. that thirty nine fifty X looks pretty good. It's going to be a thing. <laughs> Terrifying. All right. Uh, good news, everyone. Open source and Creative Commons kind of prevails in a weird way. They did, and uh, MetaBrains. Uh, you may remember we had Frezzo on. Uh, Frezzo, yeah. Or, we talked about that. I still don't know what it is. Mm-hmm. Me neither. Okay. But <laughs> the fact of the matter is they are a uh, an aggregator of information about a great deal many things. And mm-hmm. they had two uh, specific uh, pictures in their website that they were using, which were Creative Commons pictures. Uh, and they mentioned the name of the photographer. It's Larry Philpot. And Mm -hmm. they were using uh, those pictures to in one of those pages, and a copyright troll decided to uh, go for one of a couple of loopholes that are present in U.S. um, copyright law when it comes to Creative Commons, and they tried to uh, do what copyright trolls do, extort money out of them uh, to see if they could make profit out of uh, MetaBrains. And MetaBrains contacted a uh, lawyer company local to them uh, from, uh, what was it? Pillsbury Winthrop Shop Pittman LLP. (laughs) And they got in touch with them and it's like, okay, we'll take it to the board and see if uh, we can do this pro bono. And 
kudos, major kudos to that particular lawyer firm. They accepted to do it pro bono. And like, they immediately fired back. It's like, nope, this isn't a legitimate thing. Then they gathered as much evidence as they could and they presented the counter uh, claim and the uh, copyright troll gave up on the case. So the case was dismissed with prejudice, which means that uh, the uh, copyright troll can no longer bring this claim back against uh, Metabrains. This is Kudos. very important. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So that's going to set <laughs> precedence, and that's really good to see. I mean, it made me happy. Not to read the story, but how they handled it. They walked in, yeah, played it logically. And that lawyer firm, seriously, yeah. kudos. Pro- <laughs> they did a great job. Very important, yeah. and especially when you're something like music brains or anything. When I see Creative Commons Media, I'm like, oh, well, that's safe to use. Which it is, but that still doesn't mean that you're going to not end up 300 grand in the hole trying to say, yes, see, I told you it was. Mm-hmm. And you're not always going to get attorney fees back. Uh, that's terrifying. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. sad they had to go through with that, man. I wouldn't wish yeah. that. I, all right, I'd wish that on my worst enemy, but like my second worst enemy <laughs> and above? Oh, no, no, I wouldn't. <laughs> um, Good to know. Good to know. And if you ever want to keep track of like law stuff, legalese, uh, gaming related or stuff like this, uh, I, I think uh, Pedro and I are both Let, patrons Leonard of French. Leonard French, man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> support that guy. It, it, he does a show every Sunday morning. Go check that. It's a good watch. I always have that going when I'm making this show. Here is an interview with Nova King from Scale17X. Uh, Nova is actually an amazing person and one of the smartest people I know and has been Scale's wonder kid for a long time and actually has become a very good friend of mine. I have been going to incredible talks at Scale over the last four years, which were featured in the Scale The Next Generation Youth Track. And he just tweeted me and the project where we've interviewed him about, um, he's, he's making progress on it and has now a new name for it called Stardust UI. And once again, we're here at the Lutris booth. Yay, Matthew! <laughs> and of course, one of our very own from Linux Gamecast, Matthew, otherwise known, Commandant, otherwise known as Strider or Strikor. And <laughs> oh, you haven't, you don't use that as much anymore. <laughs> I do. I just thought when people call me Strikor, they're just weird. Yeah, this is weird. Okay, <laughs> that makes me weird, right? Well, <laughs> no. I mean, everyone knows that already. <laughs> Okay. About you, Jill. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, I'm here also with um, Nova King once again. I had done a, a, did an interview with him yesterday, but I wanted him to talk about an amazing project he's working on in, in more detail. So can you tell us about your latest project? Yes. Hello. So as of now, I have created an entire, essentially an entire idea of how I've been, uh, of how I'm going to do this project. It's an augmented reality user interface for Linux. And so the way it's going to work is that it's going to be a Wayland compositor. And it's going to essentially take the elements from applications in Qt and GTK, and it's going to re-render them using its own, uh, using its own custom code. And it has, for example, theming support. Um, it also has the ability to take app elements and you can essentially rearrange them or swap them. And if you're an app developer who wants a bit more fine-tuned advanced control, you can always um, just inject custom rendering code into the compositor and it will render it'll render an advanced window for you. Wow. And that's the basics of that's the basics of the project and there's going to be a lot more of features I have planned to come and so on and so forth. But now that I've got a whole roadmap ahead, I'm going to get right on it as soon as possible. Yeah, and, and Matthew and um, uh, Nova were talking earlier. Matthew, what were your thoughts? Yeah, that, that seems a pretty neat idea. I mean, I'm waiting to see some what it will look like when it's ready to be used. Uh, but this seems pretty interesting. I mean, there's probably something we could do, like, for example, um, Lutris is a GTK program. So you said that's, that it could be, like, you could re render uh, GTK U- UIs in a different way, like, uh, d- like in your custom render. So this, I mean, I don't really know it would work with uh, traditional U- uh, programs, but I mentioned that if you write specific UIs for your 
uh, renderer that could have something very interesting. Um, I remember writing something, um, a Coverflow plugin for Lutris, where you could just have all the um, covers of video games like in iTunes and you could like scroll through them. And that was using like OpenGL stuff and stuff like this. But if you could do something similar with AR, where you just have like, all your covers and and like browse through them and like, yeah, that's really pretty, pretty, pretty neat. I mean, yeah. Yeah, and just to clarify real quickly, the idea is that GTK would handle all of the UI and positioning of elements, and it would actually provide all of the text inside and the icons and so forth. But then all of the actual widget elements, for example, the button widget, would be handled by custom rendering code. And so that basically allows the exact layout to look the same. But say, for example, you can have, um, oh, I don't know, you can have different themes like a metallic theme where all of your buttons have shaders that make them look metallic along with meshes to make the buttons look metallic and so on and so forth. And, um, and so in theory, the app developer would not have to rewrite their GTK code if they didn't want to. However, if they wanted a more fine-tuned experience for AR, they certainly could. What an amazing project. And yay, you know, we need we need Wayland to come on strong now. <laughs> Matthew. So, um, yeah, uh, by the way, do you have any like, sort of um, experiments you've been playing with? I mean, do you have some kind of proof, proof of concept that's, or uh, um, how good, like, how far have you got like into this uh, rendering thing? I mean, are you able to like, present a GTK window, for example, in a different way or? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, unfortunately, not as of yet, but I have made plenty of prototypes for the actual UI design. Um, I have sent some images, and hopefully they should be displaying in a corner of something of the concept art that I've made about this. Um, and I've also created an Oculus Go demo using Unity. So I've got some very basic UI concepts, but as of the Linux integration, that's what I'll be working on very, very soon. So there's uh, going to be some new updates with uh, GTK. Um, GTK 4 is going to ship with GSK, so that's a uh, GTK scene kit. And this is going to provide a Vulkan renderer. So would that be interesting for... I know that's something we are interested with for Lutris, because we plan to build a full screen UI. And I feel that could be interested interesting for your project as well what i'm wondering is why this is your renderer so wayland specific what is what make it like a uh, exclusive to wayland and not compatible with x or xorg well there's several different reasons uh the main one being that wayland just is okay the wayland the way wayland is structured instead of ha x having a root window um, root windows are not applicable in augmented reality. Um, and also, one of the huge, huge limitations of X is that it has no official transparency support. And if you're creating something like an AR UI, you need transparency in order to be able to overlay windows on top of each other, for example. Especially with some of the more advanced features I have planned, but those are just, those are just concepts right now, and so... I'm not quite ready to discuss them just in case they don't pan out. Um, so personally, I've had a very hard time using Wayland because the drivers are like just not ready yet, uh, especially for NVIDIA. Uh, have you had like your on your own setup? Uh, have you had good experience with Wayland like on NVIDIA's uh, chips or AMD? Uh, how's your usage of Wayland going? Uh, because I know that it's, it's been pushed back so many times by distributions that it's still a work in progress, I feel. Um, not really production ready, but it's getting there somehow. I mean, yeah, how's you, how do you feel about Wayland currently? Well, uh, currently about Wayland, I feel like it, yes, it is currently in development. But I have tried a few desktop environments that do feature Wayland, and uh, so far they've actually been surprising. I thought that Wayland was, you know, way more under in terms of development. However, I'll give you a perfect example. Um, so the idea is that if I create a Wayland desktop environment, then more likely people will try and create better graphics drivers for it. And so we'll get more support. 
And in the meantime, while there isn't very much support for drivers, I can go around that and, for example, use something that is well implemented like OpenGL. Well, thank you so much, Nova, once again, for your wonderful, all, all your, the project you're working on, and I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing its development and what comes out of it. And thank you, Matthew, once yeah, again. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> it's time for a quick slice of pie. We do get a bit of news. This fell out yeah, of Yeah, it's huge. Right? It's teeny tiny <laughs> little bit of news. <laughs> Yeah. Raspberry <laughs> Pi 4, starting at $35, to which I was along with the rest of the internet going, well, you said there wasn't going to be a Raspberry Pi 4 in 2019. Why did you? Okay, I'll give him my money. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's out. It's new hotness at 1.5 gigahertz quad core uh, Cortex A72. So they're saying this three mm -hmm. times as fast and the benchmarks I've seen. Uh, back that up. One gig, two gig. And what got me interested, four gigs of... LP DDR4 SD RAM that's a lot faster. Also, look at me. I'm smiling internally a little bit. I don't know. Smiling yeah. hurts my face. Um, <laughs> an actual gigabit Ethernet port not attached to the USB. Full throughput. Yeah. Bluetooth 5.0 802.11 AC wireless. Two USB 3.0 ports. Two USB 2.0 dual monitor. Um, mini or micro. HDMI that will support 4K 30 on two screens, 4K uh, 60 on one, and it comes with two, so when one of them will break, mm -hmm. I mean, these things just break, <laughs> you'll have another one that you can use. And they're saying 4K 60 uh, with the uh, hardware encoding, uh, mm -hmm. video decoding. So, and complete backwards compatibility, new version of Raspbian, and oh yeah, the power thing is now USB C. It increased a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is just amazing. It now supports two 4K monitors via two micro HDMI ports. They've converted the one full size HDMI to two micro HDMI ports. And uh, it has up to four gigs of RAM um, option, which is only $55. And it's it's truly the cheapest low-end desktop replacement computer you can buy now. Uh, no, it's amazing. Man, I don't know. I've, I've already seen people online like, well, it doesn't have this and this. And it's like, it's a $55 oh, tinker toy. Dollar computer. Dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what's and really cool is... It's, yeah, well, go ahead, Pedro. <laughs> that's, uh, yeah, no, the... It's a 50... Like, uh, over here, it's 53 pounds. Mm -hmm. You're getting ARM64... <laughs> the new a72s uh you're getting uh two micro hdmi 2.0 connectors which can do uh up to 3840 2160 a piece uh and you're like four gigs of uh lp 4 ram that that's significant for yeah. a board you know credit card sized <laughs> that is very very significant yeah, it's uh, I saw um, a lot of people saying in the uh, like the announcements like, oh, yeah, the, it's a single board computer that could be a desktop replacement. It's like <laughs> you, you, you do that. And you're like, yeah, we're getting there. The next one. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. we'll get there. But yes, <laughs> it is a very powerful single board computer. But even the most powerful Chrome boxes out there fail to deliver on that particular front and yeah let's be honest it's a very nice sticker toy but calling it a full-on desktop replacement it is not <laughs> no, I, I i don't even think the Raspberry Pi found it they're, they're not even like man this is a desktop yeah no, it was the other news sites <laughs> all right well man <laughs> don't worry though because you can't buy one they, they were comp and i checked oh, yeah, completely they sold out everywhere sold out. Yeah. you can <laughs> They're not even going to start shipping until, I think, like July 16th. Anyway, this was all like pre-order, pre-order, but now you can officially pre-order. Birthday which... gift? No. <laughs> Just say it. Uh -uh. <laughs> you have to send me one for your birthday. We can arrange that. <laughs> this Probably won't a... get there by my birthday, but we, we oh, can arrange that. <laughs> see, I was thinking to myself, everyone, I was like, man, I wish I knew somebody that lived in Cambridge near the pie store. <laughs> yes. Came up, well, near <laughs> is debatable. It's like five miles away, but sure. Near. <laughs> I run more than that every morning. <laughs> Yeah, run. Probably would get there faster if I ran there than taking the bus. Okay, I see. <laughs> I was thinking about 
that I had to think to myself, everyone is like, what is it going to cost to get Patreon to go there? It's like, I'm going to have to buy him something. <laughs> I was already on your wish list. And um, I was like, uh, buy me another one. <laughs> it's like, okay, go there and buy two. <laughs> and then he's going yeah. to send it back. Uh, <laughs> dude, if you would run and live stream, would you actually get, had to like jog? I, 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 I could be convinced. I could like go a couple hundred pounds. <laughs> I'm just, for my amusement, I probably wouldn't air it. I would just watch it for myself, for my own enjoyment. Oh. I have a phone that could probably live stream it. We can discuss price later. <laughs> uh, what am I looking? Because as soon as you get up to, okay, it's got real gigabit Ethernet on it. I'm like, yes. Yeah. Four gigs of RAM. It's like, okay. And what I need to find out is whether or not I can build an OptiPi or a Pyplex. Because we have oh, two Optiplexes yeah. right now, which are dual core, mm -hmm. uh, four threaded i3s with four gigs of RAM and gig gigabit Ethernet. That's all. The, and they can run Chrome. That's it. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's all they need to do. The, you know, these two computers right here. That's, mm -hmm. uh, they're butter robots. I want to know if I can build a $55 butter robot. Yes. Well, if there's one yeah. thing those uh, Broadcom chips can do, it's uh, hardware decoding. I so. don't know if that's yeah. going to work with Chromium. Chrome. Chrome. Yeah. Uh, that's the... eh, force enable uh, hardware acceleration. We'll have it's to Chromium. See. Again, it's 55 yeah. bucks. I'm going to pick one up. It'll make for a fun video. Uh, and then it should work yeah. with the video encoders on these boxes. Should. USB 3. That's another thing that I need it, you know. So, mm -hmm. yeah, stay tuned. So, what if you looked at a rap, Raspberry Four and you're like, "Nah, man, I'm a hipster." And that's way too mm -hmm. powerful. Yeah, too big, uh, massive. It, it wouldn't go well with my eight-inch laptop. And <laughs> maybe you were really pining really hard for the old chip, the one that uh, was going to be a six-dollar uh, computer that never really came to be. Well. Yeah. Now there's something else, and uh, it's a ten dollar uh, part, so it's right down there with the Raspberry Pi Zero W, and it has two hundred and fifty six gigs of RAM. No, nope. and... quit lying to people. It does not. Uh, no, it has two hundred and fifty six uh, megabytes of RAM. Uh, Incorrect. It has four GBs. <laughs> No, the four GBs, uh, he's talking about the Raspberry Pi 4. Don't care. I'm reading the word <laughs> GBs. <laughs> yeah, GBs. But yeah, no. Uh, here, uh, this one, the, what do they call it? The Rock Pi S has only mm -hmm. 256 uh, megabytes of RAM. Uh, it is very much in line with what uh, the chip, the CHIP was trying to do. But it has a reasonable price, and more uh, than the chip did, it has Wi-Fi built in. Mm -hmm. So this is down there with the Raspberry Pi Zero W. It's tiny, like minuscule. You uh, desolder the Ethernet and the USB ports and maybe the GPIO pins if you're not going to use them. And all of a sudden, you have something that's teeny tiny that'll fit just about anywhere. This is true. However, this does have one thing in common with a Raspberry Pi 4. Gigabit? It <laughs> sold the delete expletive out everywhere. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. That's very true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It makes sense. When you have a, um, a system on a chip or a single board computer like this that's tiny, people immediately go, I have a use for that. And they disappear. Like uh, the, no, you don't, when you, the you, okay, that, that's factually true. You go, Ooh, I get a use for that. And it's still in the box. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Raspi zero. Yeah. Hi, I'll go get you in a minute. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the original Raspberry Pi zero, when it first came out, it was sold out everywhere. And then they released a Raspberry Pi zero W, which mm -hmm. came with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. It sold out everywhere, and you maybe now you can get like one or two Raspberry Pi Zeros without the Wi-Fi's, uh, but good luck. Seriously, I think yeah. it's really good. Well, I mean, we were all excited about the chip, and unlike the chip, I, if you go back yeah. and watch way back, mm -hmm. I was talking to one of my hardware friends. I'm sure Pedro remembers we were talking about it, and he just straight up like laid it out for me. He's like, even in bulk from China, you can't build this thing for nine bucks. Yeah. And we just sit back and wait it, and it's like, yeah, and there it goes. So, yeah, this is priced where so sad. sustainability and keep it around. Yeah, 
And yeah. like the Picos uh, that they had uh, built on the chip, this could very well replace it. I've always wanted to step on a Lego with Wi-Fi. <laughs> this will fulfill dreams. Those CPIO pins will immediately embed themselves into your skin. That'll be awesome. Yeah. I'll be a cyborg. <laughs> Jill, what's up? Yeah. Well, I have a pocket chip, and this is a really nice upgrade. It'd be really nice if it was the exact same form factor, <laughs> so I can stick it into my pocket chip uh, um, mini computer. So, <laughs> but um, uh, don't know yet if it will be compatible with the chip or not. But I was really excited about this because it fills that need with the pocket chip, with uh, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi and and everything else in the small little package. Mm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Right on. So. Maybe, all right, if you're sitting around, I, I want to hear from everyone at home. If you got a chance, man, tell me the most, not not dirty strange, but like the weirdest use case you've come up for, with well, not just a Pi, but a single board computer, because I know you have. And if you want to do that, how can you go about it, Pedro? <laughs> oh, you can go about it uh, in a multiple Carrier ways, pigeon. but yes, you can actually attach it to a carrier pigeon and... Uh, I don't know, send it somewhere. We'll pick it up, don't worry. Or you can go to LinuxGameCast.com and hit the contact button. Uh, make sure squack to pick LW. Squawk. Squack. Squack. <laughs> uh, make sure to pick LWDW on the uh, show selection box and uh, give us the rest of the necessary details and uh, send us your message. Uh, make sure if you are building something off of a Raspberry Pi or one of these uh, single board computers, include some pictures mm-hmm. or a story if you want. Beware it's, our uh, spam golem, though, man. I go back and check the yes. filter like when I remember to on that exact schedule. <laughs> 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 there, was, there was a guy try. They weren't trying to send us keys, but it was a marketer uh, for mm-hmm. video games. We do a show about video games on Saturday. Uh, they didn't give up, man. They had like nineteen tries at it. And it was like, yo, you can't post all that. And they're like, well, I'm just going to keep at it, buddy. So like, keep that yeah, in mind with like hyper. A couple of URLs like we know how to is Google. probably fine. You know, just yeah. name what it is. Uh, all right. So, uh, Frizo. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, since uh, this is about Jill's t shirt, I'm going to take yeah. it. Uh, okay. the, yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, last week, uh, Jill was wearing a certain t shirt, which. Uh, She's wearing again. Uh, and Fresa was like the whole time trying to figure out exactly what that t-shirt says. What did the text on Jill's t-shirt say in LWDW173? <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Gates. Frizo, dude, question we mark, get question it. Question you mark, can't read, mark. man. Just be like, hey, man. <laughs> Your server today. Her microphone was obscuring that bit of the text, and I ended up spending too much time <laughs> of the video trying to figure out what it said instead of listening to y'all, uh, to what y'all were saying. Uh, until I eventually gave up and decided to write and ask instead of focusing more on that. Okay. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> so Frezzo of uh, uh, Metabrains fame, yes, he works at Metabrains, the story we talked about earlier. Um, it says, good evening, Mr. Gates. I'll be your server today. And has a picture of Tex the Penguin getting ready to stomp on the Microsoft campus in Redmond, Washington. And actually, this was one of my very first Linux shirts that I bought in the late 1990s from Penguin Computing back in the day. <laughs> so it's a it's a vintage shirt in you, Linux you terms. You really got to like the um, <laughs> late 90s. That's when you you could like straight up rip somebody's idea off the internet and put it on a shirt and be like, that's ours now. Yes, <laughs> yes. We're selling and of course, it. It's ours. And, and of course, all the shirts then, they didn't, they didn't make Linux shirts for women back then, so... <laughs> It's too big for me, <laughs> so. <laughs> but that's I, I'm used to men, men's Linux shirts. I'm just gonna stay just, out of that. You know. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah, no. I, see, I was going to make the point that Fresa was just checking Jill out throughout the whole show, but. Oh. <laughs> yeah, listen, man. You know, Pedro, are you gonna t-shirts? I'm impressed. You're not wearing one. No, no, I'm still wearing yeah, the exact gonna... same shirt I wore for work. You're today. almost dressed like a civilized human being, man. Yeah. I mean, it's shocking. All right, my fellow civilized human beings, we're going to bounce out of here. We're going to roll some credits. Thank the people who make this show possible, and we'll see you next week. Yay!
Yay, chat room. We love you. <laughs> Yay, Finn! Yay, Pedro! <laughs> Yay, Jill! I like to imagine that you practice this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know Jill does. Get good. <laughs> I I actually have been. <laughs> That's why it sounds so artificial. Quit practicing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you to our producers, our wonderful producers and executive producers. We love you all. <laughs> so many. So many. You, and you're all <laughs> awesome. So very awesome. It's amazing. <laughs> LWDW176. Amazing. <laughs> hmm? Yep, it, it, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> You're just looking at a dark screen now. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Hi. Bye, everyone. <laughs> I was watching him. They didn't know what to do. It was cute. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, are you going to be doing anything with that? No? Okay. <laughs> I was amusing myself. <laughs> that was my reward. 